Hello and welcome to another edition of Stalwart Academy. Today we'd like to talk to you about enterprise video conferencing and provide a basic conceptual overview of the opportunities that are available in the technology today. For many of us, video conferencing consisted in the past of having a basic video endpoint, Tenver, Polycom, and the like, where we'd have an opportunity to have a basic point-to-point -point video and audio conference either via the internet or inside of an enterprise. And for the most part, those video conferencing solutions were pretty straightforward to set up, some basic IP address information, um, an H323 or a SIP configuration, and the assignment of bandwidth, and then the ability then to make a video conferencing call from one endpoint to the other. But the downside in this scenario is that if one of the endpoints were inside of an enterprise, then you'll make a lot of modifications on your firewall and frankly drill a lot of holes in your security perimeter in order to get that to work properly. Fortunately today, with some of the advancements in the technology, especially with a lot that has taken place with Cisco's acquisition of Tanberg, much of that has been simplified and is more secure today. So for example, if we were to add a couple of elements to this infrastructure, one being Cisco's video control system, on the inside of the network, also Cisco's video control expressway on the DMZ of your network, we would then be able to register these internal endpoints centrally to the control system, and obviously it would support multiple endpoints inside your environment while also having connectivity between VCS and VCS Expressway at the perimeter of your network. Once this is accomplished, the firewall is basically configured to only allow communication from the outside of the network for video into the VCS Expressway. Now, there is no need to have those video ports open all the way to the inside of your network whereby allowing you to have a tighter level of security at your perimeter. Things that are required for a solution like this is actually configuring external DNS to support service records. Those service records would allow you to do what's known as URI dialing, where you could use the user's name or alias, much like an email address, and contact that user leveraging service records in DNS where now that call would be terminated from an external user through to the expressway again this being a service record lookup in external DNS expressway would terminate the call and then become a gateway from the internal to the external communication whereby providing communication from the outside of the network to the inside of the network more securely. In addition, it provides for having <clears throat> H323 traffic communicate, for instance, with SIP traffic and becoming a gateway for intercommunications of those two protocols, and also by adding other elements, you can do additional video conferencing If you had an MCU, where you had additional resources, you now could have additional people from the internal portion of your network join a conference call with folks that may be customer based, whereby giving you the ability to have a straight video conferencing solution in your environment as well. And what we have found is that what's compelling about this solution is that now companies are able to stay in touch with their customers more and stay in close contact, especially 
when there's an issue and there's a lot of travel involved, they may be able to even reduce travel costs and mileage or in airfare and hotel, as well as meal expenses. And we're finding that many of our clients today are able to find a return on their investment in a payback period of generally 12 to 16 months on an enterprise solution like this. Hope this has been helpful for you. Please, if you have any questions, contact us and we'd love to speak to you about how a video conferencing solution might benefit your enterprise. Thank you and have a great day.